Um, <clears throat> so to use those, you configure the switch port as a trunk, connect that thing to a physical IBMI port, configure a standard Ethernet line. The Ethernet line does not matter here. There's no settings on the line to configure it to support uh, VLAN tags. That's it's not um, on the VLAN or on the Ethernet line. Um, it's the add TCP IFC um, or in IBM Navigator for I, um, not the old dead nav. It's not in there. Um, you add the interface to the line and enter a VLAN number. So this is how that looks. Um, we get a new interface. I'm going to give it a static address. And then here you can see that we're using uh, ETH trunk 1 is the line description. And in this case, VLAN number 294. And an IP address there, 172.29.4.218. So, and then there's that alias name that we mentioned earlier. Um, the alias name VLAN 294 in this particular case. So, um, that's how you specify a VLAN if you have <clears throat> the need to do so. So, let's talk about proper system identification. IBM I needs to know who it is. All right. And that's very important. Many servers and services will not operate correctly if the system doesn't know its own name. Um, so you want to type CFG TCP in um, option 12 and then look at the host name and the domain name. You put those together. All right. So something, um, you know, v7r3prod.frankeni.com. All right. That's the fully qualified domain name. And then you resolve that. How do you resolve it? You can do host space and give that name, or you could try a ping.